and also the future of professionalism or professional social work so these are the objectives by which we are studying history of social work in asia pacific 2 okay now we are moving to major issues of social work intervention in asia and uh, yesterday also we saw we face various challenges and uh, when we think about southeast asia uh, especially bangladesh we know that uh, they are facing various issues like unemployment illiteracy malnutrition disabled disabled children maternal morbidity mortality violence gender disparity crime against women children prostitution street children drug addiction pollution population poor housing these are all social problems okay and uh, in bangladesh in bangladesh if you look into the history or uh, in the present scenario we can see all these points then floods droughts uh, cyclones storms river bank erosion all these things are there in bangladesh when we think about sri lanka uh, lot of problems like poverty even now you all are aware about uh, you know the present problems sri lanka is facing uh, they are facing poverty aging then neglected or abandoned or poor child disabled persons then new economic political and social problems uh that aggravated all the present problems of uh, you know sri lanka so sri lanka is facing all these problems in india if we take india uh, we know that human rights violation is happening in major places then gender discrimination persons with hiv or aids then environmental destruction then crisis of governance Uh, political uh, crisis we are facing effects of globalization we all say that climate is uh, changing like anything we are facing extreme heat floods all those things effects of globalization then all these issues india is facing then poverty is there problems of industrial workers is there migrant poor health services the migration is a big problem uh, as we all are aware lot of people from north india is migrating to uh, south india especially to kerala then malnutrition is another problem so these are major issues of social work intervention in india okay so uh, these are the these are the major problems faced by bangladesh sri lanka and india and when we think about indonesia indonesia yesterday we saw major uh, points uh, indonesia is also facing problems like poverty neglected children then disabled children then persons not complying with social norms i think you all must be listening to this particular point for the first time for example now listen persons not complying with social norms that is uh, with regard to indonesia why we say that can anybody explain deviant. in indonesia deviant. ah yes yes social deviants uh. social deviants yes they are not they are going against rules and regulations so in indonesia we can see this particular problem then victims of disasters then so these are the major problems faced in indonesia so i am discussing major problems faced by people in asia and why social work intervention is needed when we think about malaysia we can see the their problems are entirely different uh, than what we discussed um child abuse is there then uh, we need to know that unmarried teen pregnancies unmarried teen pregnancies is one of the major problems faced by malaysia then baby dumping so definitely we all uh, know we can we all can understand baby dumping uh, so abandoned children is a major problem increase number of those infected with sexually transmitted infections 
in Malaysia. We all know that Malaysia is a place fam famous for tourism. And uh, as we have heard, unmarried teen pregnancy, definitely sexually transmitted infections, including HIV. These are all major problems faced by people in Malaysia. Then, when we think about Philippines, so I think you all are getting these points. Uh, different countries, based on the uh, socioeconomic condition of countries, the problems also differ. Okay. Now, in Philippines, uh, if you go through Philippines, actually, um, there we can see various vulnerable and disadvantaged groups like neglected and abused children are there then here also we will come to know about youth offenders because they are you know uh, going against uh, rules and regulations they are worried uh, about the present laws in that particular country and they offend uh, the system then poor women this major problem. Philippines, we know most of the Filipino women, they are migrating to other countries, developed countries in search of job. Philippines. So they are leaving their family and they are going along uh, to far off uh, the world uh, to have a life. So poor women is a major crisis. Then uh, dysfunctional couples and families in Filipinos. That is a major problem faced by Philippines dysfunctional couples and families then uh, as we all know disaster management uh, is another problem then uh, you know drug abuse hiv bar aids all these are major problems faced by people in philippines now when we think about singapore uh, we know that um, uh, you know their uh, situation is little more different uh, their uh, health care, education, family, all these things, uh, uh, it is little more better. And uh, uh, the major problems uh, that we see is um, social values in children and young. That has to be inculcated. Social values among children and young people. Uh, then healthy lifestyle whether uh, they are following healthy lifestyle then uh, delinquency delinquency means uh, deviating from juvenile delinquency you all know that uh, below the age of 18 uh, children uh, going against law and they deviate they are the most vulnerable group so that kind of trend is there in uh, so which is the country we were discussing singapore singapore then uh, we can also see low income families are there then uh, so these are the basic problems of singapore but co when compared to some other places that we discussed that countries that we discussed uh, i think uh, you know singapore people are having little more privilege than uh, people from other countries then uh, thailand thailand is also a tourist destination and as we know environmental deterioration is a major problem in thailand environmental deterioration deteriorated moral values especially this is a place where tourism has to be enhanced there are major uh, you know major majority of the people are living based on tourism so then uh, deteriorated moral values is there. High divorce rate, Thailand, high divorce rate. Then human trafficking in children and women. That is happening in this particular country. Increased crime rate. Definitely, you know, uh, you know I, as I told you, it's a tourism oriented place. HIV AIDS rate is very high. Prostitution is uh, a major problem <coughs> then number of homeless children is there then so these are the major uh, problems faced by thailand and when we come to vietnam uh, as we already saw in the last class it is a war front uh, country and uh, social problems such as juvenile delinquency prostitution hiv aids 
all these are common there then migrant workers slums prostitution trafficking then urban uh, poverty like you know uh, rural and urban poverty you can see then rural and urban migration you can see because uh, whenever um, a war hit that place definitely people move from one area to another area and they face all these kind of problems then child neglect and abuse and so on so these are the major problems faced by vietnam so uh, students are you all following me yes ma'am yes uh, reshma uh, reshma can you mention about uh, uh, one major problem that uh, strike your mind reshma is here yes ma'am yeah in vietnam you are asking yeah you can say about any any country it's okay uh, like uh, in singapore you were uh, sorry in philippines you, uh, malaysia you were telling that uh, pregnancy in, ah, in yes. minor child. yeah yeah okay. and uh, child uh, um, abortions are more there, i mean hmm. uh, abortions are more there Yes. Apart from that, they are uh, uh, migrating to more developed countries through these problems. Hmm. Okay. Nia, um, uh, which is uh, some other problem? Which are some other issues that uh, strike you, especially in Asia? Un un unemployment is uh, one of the major issues in our okay. Uh, society. Okay. unemployment is there but um, have you got strike with any specific problem that we discussed with regard to thailand vietnam uh, singapore malaysia india human trafficking yeah human trafficking yes then prostitution uh, then any other points then uh, government crisis some countries they face crisis because of uh, political crisis inflation is one of the major problem in our uh, asian countries uh, which one uh, uh, inflation 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 yes yes very important because whenever inflation is happening poverty uh, poverty is hit that particular country and people struggle like anything so that is one major problem that is also there so uh, social workers have a major role to play in southeast asia and now we will be moving on to the next main topic okay that is history of social work in africa and middle east actually this is the last unit that we will be studying last unit history of social work in africa and middle east can anybody repeat that is there of social work in african middle east social work in african, 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 african yes. middle east middle east okay now uh, major objectives objectives what do you mean by the word objective objective means you know you need to attain something whatever you do there is an objective behind that isn't it in the same way when we learn a particular topic there is an objective behind that so what are the major object objectives actually we are trying to understand through learning history of uh, africa and middle east uh, how social work emerged that we all know then uh, the development of social work discipline and future direction that is the important sometimes you will get some questions like what are the various objectives so you can definitely write to understand the future of social work in these particular countries okay now uh, when we think about uh, development of social work practice in africa south africa i am going to discuss about south africa south africa we all are very familiar with that continent it is an african continent and it is located in the southern tip we all know that and uh, 75% of the population is black african black 13% is white so you can see a, you know a combination of black and white but white people are very less and 9% of the people is colored mixed color mixed 
and three person so uh, for when we read this particular point we will understand that it has got a mixed culture or mixed uh, group of people so that definitely is going to be a big problem or we know that uh, south africa face a lot of problems with regard to color okay and uh, in the late 1980s and early 1990s government was forced to uh, dismantle because inequality existed inequality between black and white then we know that life expectancy rate okay 73 years then uh, white literacy rate all those problems were there. problems between black and white was uh, very common and a social welfare policy was evolved in south africa and uh, in 1650s and when you go back to history in 1657 a dutch reformed church and dutch east india company you all might have heard about dutch east india company uh, when you think about uh, history of india also so dutch reformed church and dutch east india company they started giving poor relief to white farmers so uh, when you go back to history in 1657 this kind of organizations started working in the field of poor relief okay now uh, in the same way we can see uh, dutch reformed church uh, so uh, this dutch east india company and dutch reformed church played a very important role in the history of south africa then uh, we can also see institutional welfare resources for people with disabilities indigenous africans continue to experience social and economic difficulties so in order to eradicate this kind of difficulties what do you mean by social and economic uh, difficulties economic difficulties we all know uh, no source of income social difficulties means like uh, discrimination based on color caste creed Uh, income so they will be uh, they will not be coming to the forefront of the society so this kind of disability so to eradicate that this kind of groups uh, worked dutch dutch reformed church worked then uh, families of black migrant laborers were forced to stay away during that time this black people faced lot of discrimination and uh, gradually they became involved like uh, even this dutch reformed church they concentrated mainly on white people during that time okay uh, then uh, we can also see uh, families of black migrant workers were forced to stay away then blacks particularly women residing in urban areas created their own self help group during that time because they were not having any other source they were not able to work in the forefront of the society so this black women started some self help group concept and they started using this money during the time of economic crisis and uh, later we can see some church groups burial societies sports clubs professional teachers like this various associations don't need to worry about this kind during those time this kind of groups were common or whenever there was a problem these particular groups came to the forefront to help people so this kind of organization started doing social welfare especially based on the needs of black people okay then uh, a particular inquiry committee in 1930s that is carnegie commission of inquiry into the poor white problem this is a committee to enquire about the problems faced by poor white people poor white people and that commission is named as was known as carnegie commission can you repeat that anjana it's a carnegie commission of enquiry yes so uh, that is a good sign by 1930s a committee was appointed to enquire into the problems okay and uh, 
this led to or this enquiry uh, led to the creation of first national government department of social welfare in 1938 so it saw uh, the emergence of a government department for social welfare in south africa in 1938 and now we can see um, practices of inequality unfairness in system all those things happened and by 1948 social welfare system under the rule of a national party a party came into existence national party 1948 and they started raising voice against the, this practice of inequality so slowly we can see a systematic framework to solve the problems of people in south africa now we can see Uh, in 1994 reconstruction and development program they also came out with a blueprint blueprint for social development what is that program reconstruction and development program in 1994 okay nanda what is that program usha 1994 reconstruction and developmental program in 1994 and uh, what what was the main purpose of this particular program for south what africa uh, social development it, uh, social it development. gave a uh, it gave a blueprint regarding social development okay now we can also see by 1996 growth employment and reconstruction what is that program growth employment and redistribution gear gear in brackets it is given gear g e a r growth employment and redistribution okay so this particular program in 1996 uh, it brought a new vision new vision of welfare embodied uh, you know to bring out various developments in all the respective fields okay so gear that is growth employment and redistribution are you all clear yes 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 clear. okay so uh, and uh, by now i am mentioning or by all these programs i am mentioning is because you will get an idea how Uh, social work emerged or this kind of concepts emerged or when you start an organization or when you work in an organization you will get a lot of you will have ideas how to improve uh, upon a particular problem okay now uh, in 1997 we can see white paper for social welfare what is that program sujada white paper white paper for social welfare okay good amida white paper for social welfare which brought a direction for social work practice so now we are going to see you know social work slowly started emerging in south africa and the first point that we have to understand is white paper for social welfare in 1997 this particular program gave a professional outlook to social uh, work especially in the context of micro and macro issues and now let me ask you a question what do you mean by micro and macro issues uh, sujada what about micro issues can you give an example small ways of doing things uh, why we need to do small ways of doing things in which all areas actually in a community or in a grassroots level we can implement various programs for the development of that particular village or that particular ward or that particular block this kind of programs implemented for the development of a particular area that can be considered as a micro micro and uh, macro means in a large level especially if you take a particular state a program for women empowerment mgnreg mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act 
we say this kudumbasri this particular act for the overall empowerment of women it's like it's a nation wide program so these kind of programs are known as known as macro 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 macro, macro. then meso is also there in between micro meso and macro and that meso means in between like uh, a little bit more uh, area or problem that we um, do using so many strategies so these kind of issues will be dealt and that is known as meso so i think you got a clear idea so white paper for social welfare that program gave emphasis uh, to solve micro and macro issues so it gave an outline a so uh, systematic outline now in south africa they faced major problems like poverty unemployment aging now i think aging is a common problem everywhere what will we do with all these aged people we don't understand but uh, and this is increasing the scope of social work in most of the developed countries human rights then child rights immigration immigration was a major problem is a major problem refugees refugees is a major problem hiv aids illiteracy then trauma resulting from violent crimes we all have read in newspapers or through news we all came to know about serious crimes uh, happening in south africa and uh, based on that serious crimes you know uh, some people are having trauma then community development is a major problem there uh, uh, sorry uh, then sexual assault then murder and so on these are the various problems south africans are facing and what are the roles of social worker in this particular country advocacy is a major role you you will definitely get a question not from this subject in some other subjects role of social worker advocacy is a major role then community development we can do major majority of the programs uh, to have community development then we can empower people then consultation is an important role networking action research it is not only really research but some action has to be taken care then policy analysis social workers should play an important role in analyzing various policies so these are the roles of uh, social workers uh, if you go to south africa okay and now with regard to social work education uh, first social work diploma started in south africa in 1924 then uh, we all know uh, we should understand a child guidance clinic started working in transvaal university college which was funded by south african women's federation so uh, you know we can see a professional approach in dealing problems then uh, we can see transvaal university is very famous for uh, providing social work education then uh, department of sociology and applied sociology at the university of pretoria pretoria that is very famous then uh, around 20 universities are providing social work education in south africa around 20 universities so that is the present uh, update about social workers in uh, social work education then an act uh, you should also understand there was an act national welfare act in 1965 which gave a very good emphasis to social work profession and a social work council also started then social and associated workers act came there so there are so many associations for professional social workers like south african council for social service professions then uh, association of south african social work educators institutions then uh, south african qualification authority saqwa so all this so from that itself it is very clear 
that it has got a professional body and uh, social work is working in full swing in this particular country and um, uh, it is also affiliated to international federation of social workers ifsw okay so this is about uh, south africa yes now we will move to zimbabwe okay so which is the topic we are discussing zimbabwe which is the main zimbabwe. topic we are discussing no 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 main yeah. topic A history of social yes yeah, history of social, social work, work in south africa yeah. South Africa, not only in Africa, we are discussing Middle South East. Africa, yeah, Africa and Middle East. So the next country we are going to discuss is, which is the country? Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe. Okay. Uh, Zimbabwe, when we think about Zimbabwe, it is a landlocked country. And landlocked country, that means it is like a closed uh, you know, uh, people living in Zimbabwe cannot, uh, you know, I'm not saying that, but, uh, you know, it's like that. They, they will not be able to survive in some other place because they are having a, their own way of living. It's a, like a landlocked country. Okay. And um, 97 population of, a percent of the population is African. Then Asian 2%. And uh, only 1% is white. Only one percent. So that means Zimbabwe is having majority population is African itself. Okay. Yes. There are various ethnic groups, as we all know. As I said to you, it's like a closed community. It has got various ethnic groups. Uh, like uh, I'm just mentioning. Uh, just listen. Uh, Mashona, Matabele, Tonga, Sena, Venda, and so on. These kind of ethnic groups are there. Ethnic groups means they have their own traditions, their own way of behavior, their own uh, rules, their own norms, all those things. So it's very difficult to, you know, work with these kind of groups. So this is the structure of Zimbabwe. Yeah. Okay. And uh, in 1980, uh, uh, a multi, uh, based on a multi-party election, British colony Rhodesia became formally independent as the Republic of Zimbabwe. So uh, after this, like uh, Zimbabwe, then later known as Republic of Zimbabwe. What do you mean by Republic? What do you mean by Republic? Republic means it has got its own constitution. So, uh, yeah. after the multi-party elections, uh, Zimbabwe became a republic. That means it has got its own constitution. Okay. Then, uh, uh, we can see by the end of uh, 1987, uh, there was a state-sponsored violence. And as a result of this violence, uh, thousands of people died and displaced. Uh, we can see social workers have had a very role to play during that time. And uh, another important point is two leading political parties, that is Zimbabwe African National Union Patriotic Front and Patriotic Front. So these two parties always used to have this kind of fight and this uh, usually affected the people of Zimbabwe because political crisis used to happen in this particular uh, country. And, uh, uh, and by 1987, Zimbabwe became a de facto one party state. At the end, anyway, uh, these two parties united and uh, then this particular country became a one-party state uh, country by 1988. So till that time, you can see a lot of violence happened in this particular country and people suffered a lot because of this political crisis. Okay. Now, when we think about social work profession in Zimbabwe, it started earlier by 1936. 
and uh, we can see uh, major majority of the problems they had to uh, tackle during that time was juvenile delinquency juvenile delinquency and uh, trained trained social workers are appo were appointed during that time and uh, a, a major other problems faced were uh, child related problems so child protection and adoption act came in the year 1936 and in 1948 a department of social welfare 1948 Uh, we can see the development of a social welfare department so then uh, when we need, when we saw our uh, zimbabwe saw this need of social work education due to the above mentioned problems uh, can amida say which were the major problems faced by zimbabwe amida ah uh, yes ma'am Major juvenile problems, delinquency. yes. Juvenile delinquency. Ah, juvenile delinquency. Then political crisis. Yes, political then, crisis. Then child child rights. Women rights, maybe. Ah, so, women rights. I haven't mentioned, but uh, child rights was mentioned. Yeah, so, okay, ma'am. Um, yeah, the Zimbabwe government understood uh, that social work education is significant. and in 1964 just two fathers of roman roman catholic church established a school of social services in 1964 that was the start of an education program with regard to social work and this uh, particular program offered one year certificate in group work group work we all know group work so Uh, 1964 school of social services by gestured fathers of roman catholic church introduced social work education in zimbabwe okay and uh, then uh, they started through this group work activities they started solving various problems like unemployment overcrowding destitution juvenile delinquency prostitution and family breakdown so these were the major problems that was tackled using group work uh, or by professional social workers okay i will uh, repeat uh, once again unemployment overcrowding overcrowding is sometimes is a social problem actually you know if people are uh, while going against laws we cannot do anything so overcrowding can become a major problem then destitution uh, destitute children uh, all this becomes a problem juvenile delinquency prostitution family breakdown all those okay now in 1966 we can see a three year diploma now uh, in 1964 it offered only a one year certificate program but in 19 uh, which is the year i forgot can anybody help me out 1966 1966 this same school school of social services introduced a 3 year diploma okay and by 1969 this particular school of social services that changed its name as school of social work in 1969 clear so that kind of development happened in the field of education and uh, and it became the first college university of rhodesia it became the first college to provide social work education in zimbabwe university of university of rhodesia 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 and now if you search it is known as university of zimbabwe university of zimbabwe okay and again courses like bachelor of social work started uh, four year bachelor of social work started then clinical social work started uh, then uh, bachelor of social work degree in social rehabilitation started then social work honors degree started then master of social work mswb program started by 2011 so you can see a growth of 
you know social work education uh, during that time okay it's clear okay yes yes so uh, and uh, we can also see that school of social work under this university remains the institution offering social work education although there are now uh, university of zimbabwe is the only organization providing social work but this university of zimbabwe is providing various programs related to social work and um, uh, the challenge that uh, social work education in zimbabwe is facing is Uh, to deal the structural problems structural problems uh, especially with regard to uh, politics then uh, you know some uh, as i told you it has got various ethnic groups so it is very difficult to get into the groups and solve their issues so that is one major problem faced by social workers then Uh, professional association of zimbabwe is known as national association of social workers and this is also affiliated to ifsw and um, uh, they very good attention has to be given for the serious challenges for this profession especially in zimbabwe okay yes so um, uh, fatima fatima yes ma'am Yes, uh, Fatima. What is the major challenge uh, that social workers in Zimbabwe they are facing? Social workers, uh, uh, political uh, to solve the political problems, and about the uh, 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 under groups. under under which head we can say uh, this political problem. It can be said as uh, structural issues, isn't it? Structural issues. Issues. then uh, what are the other points coming under structural issues uh, especially because of the peculiarity of zimbabwe uh, um, unemployment uh, overcrowding no. no it's not yeah that these are all problems but uh, by structural issues ethnic groups are very common ethnic yeah so it is uh, not easy to intrude into those groups isn't it okay yeah so that is why uh, it is very it is a challenging uh, role for social workers in zimbabwe okay? okay yeah now we will move on to so which were the two countries that we discussed today zimbabwe and uh, south africa south africa now we are going to see next one botswana which is the country that we are going to see botswana Botswana. Then uh, we have uh, Egypt. Then we have uh, Libya and Sudan. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I will just go fast with Botswana. This is also a landlocked country, and uh, it is surrounded by South Africa, Namibia, Zimbabwe, and Zambia. And uh, when we think about um, Botswana, majority are Christians. Uh, majority not uh, half of the people are christians then uh, what about the other half they follow some traditional uh, their own religions and uh, when we think about um, adult literacy and rate and all it has got a very good literacy rate like above 85% of people are literate uh, this country is a growing country it has got a significant growth because this country is mainly having mining sector so because of that this country is economically stable okay and uh, another important point is uh, this country is having multiculturalism then uh, therefore we know that racial discrimination is a common problem faced by people in botswana okay so you got a picture about botswana now we are moving to the problems and uh, social work education in botswana uh, british people when they started thinking about colonizing botswana uh, they uh, they were not that uh, of that much interest to uh, colonize in this particular country because they thought that this area is devoid of resources this uh, country is not having any resource and uh, they thought it will not be worth uh, settling there okay 
so we can see during that colonial period uh, when this british people were there during that time they never concentrated much on social development in botswana they haven't thought about you know a growth in botswana so that was a major problem and uh, social services such as education and health which existed at that time were very less or rudimentary very less and um, you know were provided by tribal organizations and that was mainly done through tribal organizations during that time and also some respective chiefs we know tribal people they have their own chief and they solve the problems like that so this is the way that happened in botswana why because britishers were not of that much interest to colonize <coughs> in this particular country and so you got a picture about um, which is the country botswana botswana <coughs> okay botswana during those earlier years they faced this problem only because it was colonized by britishers but they were not of that much interest to settle there so they haven't introduced various social development programs okay <coughs> now when we um, think about 1966 and all we can see a widespread initiative from government side by 1966 we can see a change where government started showing some initiatives in the social service sector and uh, they considered a national strategy for community development <coughs> in botswana they thought about community development okay and uh, community development included basic infrastructure development like what do you mean by community what is the difference between <coughs> community development and community organization can anybody say what is the difference between community development and community organization development means development of that particular people in that area community that that community only they will be doing maybe they okay. will be uplifting that community the people in that community only but organization means it is an already developed uh, developed uh, system and uh, Uh, they can get aid from government or uh, they will be getting um, for uh, organization a head is be, will be there so they will be doing uh, some help to the uh, a structured organization a structure will be there for the organization the other one is the development means uh, they are focusing on the uh, that poor area or uh, they will be focusing on individual individually they will be doing it i don't know but i just uh, any other answers anybody okay <laughs> actually um, who said that answer sujada uh, anjana ma'am anjana anjana mm. yeah okay uh, anjana um, what you said is uh, not right uh, we, okay. you all should understand community development and community organization community development program means for example if you take an example from india kudumbasri or mgnrg is a uh, community development program because it is a development of a particular area or a particular group of people with the support of government are you clear with the support of government it is a government program for the upliftment of people and it is funded supported and Uh, helped by government okay but community organization means that can be done by anybody like ngos even by government or uh, some groups welfare pro, uh, agencies uh, all these people can do community organization so that they can bring together a group of people to solve some social problems in the community that can be done by anybody any association uh, any welfare agencies clear yeah there is no need for the support of government or there will not be support of the government in most of the community organization programs okay yeah. 
okay so this is the basic difference between community development and community in community development definitely aid support from government will be there so that is the difference so here also when we were discussing about community development here in uh, botswana we can see basic infrastructure development what are the basic infrastructure facilities need uh, needed by a nation basic infrastructure it can be schools it can be roads it can be dams it can be clinics it can be drought relief programs now listen in kerala we have very good phcs very good uh, roads has to be there very good um, schools are there so these are all coming as per even bridge over bridge uh, metro all these are very important when we think about when we think about infrastructure so slowly in botswana also government started thinking about basic infrastructure okay and uh, in 1972 botswana swat started a uh, agriculture college formal training is provided to uh, people uh, in the field of agriculture then uh, we can see in 1974 uh, in this particular college some social work programs were also included like certificate in social and community development uh, by 1974 so you, we can see a slow progress in the social aspects of botswana and um, uh, formally social work education began in botswana in the department of social work university of botswana during 1985 and later we discussed about 1972 botswana college of agriculture and along with that they started a certificate program but here by 1985 we can see a department of social work under the university of botswana uh, in uh, the department of social work started in botswana university okay and uh, we can also see the growth of social work department uh, because certificate in social work program two year diploma in social work four years bachelor's degree all this started in this particular place then in mid 90s professional social work in botswana like in other development required social workers with high qualification and uh, you know the social work profession Uh, came in good demand then we can also see uh, botswana's government development plan in that they included a proposal uh, for an msw program in the university of botswana so government itself initiated a uh, you know a program is needed for uh, that particular country and they introduced msw program in the university of botswana and mainly uh, social workers have a very good role in uh, policy and administration clinical practice youth and community development and also in research in this particular country and also they have very good problems like uh, poverty unemployment crime and uh, when i read all these points i was uh, just thinking in most of the african countries crime rate is high and crime is a major problem then domestic violence hiv bar aids gender inequality child abuse high rate of suicide that uh, that was also a problem seen in botswana so uh, social workers had a major role in botswana okay are you clear yes yes ma'am yes so um, um, when we discussed about botswana uh, which is the what is the one of the important point that uh, strike your mind when you when we uh, discussed about botswana um, it has yes. a literacy good literacy rate ah, and good. growing country growing Politic country economically uh, stable ah, economically stable because of mine mining uh, yeah. Uh, yeah but britishers were not able to understand that particular point okay mm. yes uh, okay and uh, you understood about the various problems faced by these people isn't it and uh, yes. what is the role of social workers uh, there okay yes ma'am 
yes so now we are moving to the next uh, african country that is egypt which is the country we are going to discuss egypt egypt okay egypt officially arabic uh, republic of egypt uh, it is officially known as arab republic of egypt and it is located in north eastern africa and uh, as we know nile river is uh, passing by that uh, country uh, it has got rich silt we all are very uh, clear about that provided the basis for development of one of the world's first great civilization that is why egyptian people they had a very good fertile land because of nile river and silt because that soil is very fertile and because of that people settled on the banks of river nile and this egyptian civilization is considered to be the first civilization happened in the world clear so that is the significance of egypt and um, uh, it's uh, we can uh, date its history uh, to about 3200 bc 3200 bc and um, it has got an it is an uh, arab socialist state arab socialist state uh, with islam is its official religion so the major religion or the religion that these people are following is islam and uh, 98% of the people live near nile valley so we can understand it is a highly populated uh, country and uh, uh, they have good rate of uh, life expectancy and all um, it's okay yes now uh, egypt is considered to be a middle income country middle income uh, and uh, poverty rates are comparatively high because we know that it is a populated country and uh, they depend mainly on this agriculture most probably because nile river and uh, definitely that will not enhance uh, economic growth so this country is not that Uh, financially viable and poverty rate is there and uh, distribution of land productive assets stocks are very uneven so their major problem i assume that it is basically related to because they have only this land so uneven distribution of land can be a major problem productive assets are very less now when we discussed about botswana they had very good mines it's a productive thing here we cannot say it is very productive uh, in agriculture if we say um, only 70% of the exploitable land was concentrated in the last 20% of all farmers in men so if uh, there is a percent of land there are so many people to make use of the land so there is an imbalance then we can see um healthcare system is not functioning properly then social imbalances are there in this particular country uh, so these are the major social problems faced by egypt land and even distribution of land lack of productive assets stocks are uneven then agriculture also most of the people depend on agriculture then inefficient healthcare systems so and badly coordinated you know this things so these are the major problems now when you think about um, social work or um, you know social welfare schemes <coughs> regarding public welfare there were three major programs public welfare actually one program is uh, ministry of insurance and social affairs misa ministry of insurance and social affairs and this uh, mainly help widows orphans divorced women invalid people or elderly people the invalid means elderly um, may apply this kind of people can apply for social assistance and uh, this ministry will provide them assistance okay 
Second program is known as Ministry of Aqua. That means religious affairs. Aqua means religious affairs. So this ministry dealt mainly uh, with regard to religious affairs. Then third one is known as Nasser Social Bank, NSB, Nasser Social Bank. And uh, they financed uh, some public enterprises. They gave finance uh, for the development of some public enterprises. And, uh, you know, as we say, they be, uh, especially in Muslim culture, they have sakkat, sakkat, they give sakkat. So local sakkat committees collect sakkat from local donors. They will uh, receive uh, sakkat from uh, local donors. And these funds will be sent to the NSB. And NSB will coordinate uh, to whom this has to be provided. So that was the major uh, functioning. That was uh, regarding the major functioning of NSB. So three major programs which were there. Ministry of Insurance and Social Affairs, MISA. Second Ministry one is AFCAP. AFCA, that means Ministry of Religious Affairs. Then, and the next one is NSB, National, National Social Bank. NSB, Nasser, 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 Nasser Social Bank. Nasser Social, Nasser Social, Bank. Social, Bank. Social Bank. They uh, mainly coordinated Sakkat program and uh, they gave it to those people who are not having anything. So that was coordinated by these people. Okay, so these were the major public welfare programs that happened in happened in Egypt Egypt Egypt, Egypt. okay now uh, uh, this country like uh, when we uh, discuss about the challenge actually Egypt is having uh, their own tradition civilization so as we have seen, many of the Western countries have developed very fast. But this Egypt is still uh, going in a slow pace with regard to uh, Westernization or globalization, all those points. Because this Egyptians mostly have their own cultural values. That is a challenge. And they have their own sentiments. They have their own sentiments. So these people, they are not willing to, you know, uh, drop all those things and move forward. But uh, they are clinging to their own social values and uh, their sentiments. So that is always um, causing a hindrance uh, towards the development of this particular country. Okay. And uh, when we think about social work profession, there are 13 universities in Egypt and uh, so School of Social Work, uh, then Helvan University, Cairo University, Alexandria University. I think uh, these are all very famous. You all might have heard about these universities, isn't it? Cairo, Alexandra, uh, Alassar University, all these are very famous universities which provide social work education. And uh, uh, there is a higher institute for social work, especially for female students. And uh, uh, same program, uh, you know, same program for female students in 1975 also, we can see they uh, developed that program. <coughs> then we can see um, Department of Casework, Department of Group Work, Department of Community Organization, Department of Social Planning, Department of Fields of Social Work. Uh, then faculty office have higher diploma, masters in social work and PhD program in social work. So these are all with regard to development of social work education. Then we can also see Cairo University provides uh, programs in community development, social and behavioral uh, programs, uh, all those programs they are providing. Then University of Alexandra provides social studies in MA, PhD program in social work. Then, uh, uh, it is mentioned here in this particular note that backbone of professional social work practice in Egypt is the baccalaureate level workers. So please try to understand, baccalaureate means who have completed undergraduate course or undergraduate with a diploma degree. So, 
there were so many undergraduate programs in social work so backbone of social work education means it is this particular group of people that is baccalaureatic level workers so uh, the, after a diploma or after a graduation they used to get job and because of that this backbone of uh, professional social work is definitely graduate level or diploma level social workers in egypt that is the condition with egypt then uh, ministry of social affairs is there ministry of education and ministry of health is there so um, then um, now uh, egypt slowly started um, having diffusing western model of social work education so slowly they are taking uh, points from western uh, social work education and that is how it is growing now okay so this is with regard to with regard to egypt yeah egypt so yeah uh, egypt we when we discussed about the egypt and when we discussed about social work education in the egypt i mentioned a particular point what was that backbone of professional social work baccalaureate is the back yeah yeah, yeah baccalaureate well, level workers level workers what do you mean by that graduate yeah. undergraduate yeah completed uh, someone with a diploma or an undergraduate diploma with an undergraduate undergraduate yes so this group is very um, this is the only uh, place where i saw this particular word also have you got that spelling b a c c a L A U R E A T E, baccalaureate. Got? Yeah. Yes. Now we are moving. Yes. Yes. B A C C A L A U R E A T E, baccalaureate. We always say laureate, isn't it? so same uh, baccalaureate okay now we are moving to the next country that is libya and sudan but uh, there is no much information about uh, libya and sudan but uh, definitely we will go through that anyway now libya okay which is the country we are going to discuss now libya libya yeah. libya 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 uh, uh it has um, uh, only few points have been given here uh, it has got seven intermediate institutes of social work and uh, admit secondary level students as in all other countries and provide four year intermediate diploma so that is the uh, role of our that is the social work education happening there they provide four year intermediate diploma okay and also bsw program and uh, it is provided only in one university that is al faith university so even now libya is not having a university with pg program in social work so uh, which is the university which is providing uh, social work education there in libya al fa al it's not faith al fati al fati l a l f a t i h f a t i h al fati okay yes so uh, libya is in a rudimentary stage with regard to social work education okay is that okay hello yes ma'am yes ma yeah yes ma'am yeah okay now we are moving to sudan okay sudan uh university of khartoum center of khartoum k h a r t o u m khartoum khartoum center of social work okay that is the department which is providing and it is not an msw or bsw it is for office offers in service training to government employees so this particular center is providing in service training so those who are appointed they will be provided training uh, how to move forward so that is what is being provided through uh, khartoum center of social work okay then 
department of sociology and social work of uh, uh, it is uh, it is not clear here girls, uh, girls college, college under. girls college under which is that university om derman islamic university om derman okay this university is offering bsw msw program so that is also very important at least in sudan we have bsw msw program then uh, cairo's university is khartoum branch so we have seen Ka cairo university so that particular university is khartoum branch uh, is offering social work uh, here in sudan also and uh, department of family studies community college for girls all these things are there so we can say in sudan also um, social work departments are in a rudimentary stage or it is in the path of growth that is what uh, we can understand because only two universities are providing uh, in sudan also okay so with that we are finishing the major topics of your subject history of social work in africa and middle east which were the various countries that we discussed south africa zimbabwe yeah. botswana yes. uh -huh. then uh, egypt now, sudan and egypt yeah sudan and egypt libya egypt. libya libya. Libya. libya and sudan sudan oh. sudan okay so now uh, i am just uh, going through one important uh, topic because i thought uh, it will be very useful for you if i take this particular point that is why i am dealing with international social work values and ethics because this is something we all should understand and whenever you know somebody asks you what do you understand by ethics or why we say social work is a professional course you should answer them that we have professional values and ethics so students should understand what are the various values and ethics so uh, i have taken this particular topic so that you will get a um, get an idea about all round you know values and ethics okay now so international social work values and ethics so uh, after taking this particular portion i will be winding up the, today's class okay so i i hope you all are clear about uh, various modules given in the page unit 1 unit 2 unit 3 unit 4 and unit 5 i tried my maximum uh, to give you information within a short span of time uh, okay uh, then you all have to read a lot uh, then explore yourself then you will get a clear picture about this we, we just gave you a uh, glimpse or gist of various things happening or the history of uh, social work in these countries. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, international social work values and ethics. Now, uh, when we think about um, international social work values and ethics, we all should understand that IFSW, uh, in 1958, there was an international conference on social welfare in Munich. Munich in which place? Germany. Okay. In 1958, there was an international conference, especially on social welfare in Munich, Germany. And the interna so during that conference, International Federation of Social Workers came up with the idea of social work values and ethics clear clear yes yes so no, 19, no. Uh, 1958 international conference is very very important and ifsw's contribution towards uh, this values and ethics is very important so jada your mic is uh, uh, yes then uh, we can also see in 2004, uh, Ethics in Social Work by International Federation of Social Workers and International Association of Schools of Social Work in 2004. And also International Association of Schools of Social Work, IASSSW. So all these people came together in 2004. 
and they gave a clear picture about various social work ethics and values and now uh, i would like to explain few principles and uh, values uh afsw statement of principles are problem areas okay now listen human rights and human dignity with regard to that we have to say respecting the right to self determination respecting the right to self determination what do you mean by that respecting the right to self determination this one you have studied in the principles of uh, uh case work isn't it counseling or case work right to self determination that means a person has the right to determine what is his choice where he has to go what he has to do all those things so even if a person is coming in front of you for a help you should first of all give priority to that person's that person's interest determination okay so that is one value or ethic that we have to follow right to self determination then promoting the right of participation right to participation everyone in this world everyone in this world has the right to participate irrespective of race color creed Uh, gender problems whatever everyone has the right to participate in what development participate in development next point is treating each person treating each person as a whole whole means w h o l e w h o l e as a whole that means each person is unique each person has got his own peculiarities each person has got his own potential each person has got scope of growth so a person who is coming in front of you treat him as a person as an individual with wholeness he has immense potentials okay next point is identifying and developing strength one value we all have to uphold is you know always try to identify strength or develop strength in people not to demotivate not to uh, target not to you know uh, humiliate but we have to develop strength in any person so that is very very important human rights and human dignity so which were the four points that i discussed yeah, right, right to self determination right yes. to participation certain development ah. treat each person as a whole as yes. identify the strength of the people strength so i don't come with you madam identify the strength or develop strength in any person no 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 identifying and developing strength identifying and developing and developing so usually what we used to do we will always say this person is having a particular um, uh, drawback or this particular is uh, negative uh, in this way so all those things but what we have to do is as social workers identify that person as he is and develop strength clear this is um, this is same thing for a community when we go to a community we say that this community is having these 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 problems but what we have to identify is we have to identify that particular community as it is and develop strength in that community develop you know what all resources identify that and improve that particular community okay yes okay yes uh, now Uh, we are moving to the next uh, thing related to social justice value related to social justice now social justice uh, now when we discussed about uh, africa itself we saw they all face lot of discrimination based on their color 
so challenging negative discrimination is the first social justice that we all have to follow challenging negative discrimination okay challenging negative discrimination it can be towards a gender the transgender communities are facing lot of problems it can be based on color it it can be based on tribal area it can be based on has and have nots so all those things we have to challenge then next point is recognizing diversity recognizing diversity another social justice we have to understand is now when we discussed about some african countries we said that it has got zimbabwe it has got various ethnic groups and when we discussed about egypt we saw it has got a civilization first civilization in the world so we have to recognize the diversity of a particular country so when you are going to a particular place when you visit a particular place when you move to a particular place please understand that it has got its own diversity next one distributing resources equitably equitably now here i would like to give an explanation what is the difference between equality and equity anybody equitably and equality what is the difference what is the difference ma'am sharing uh, can i can i give some example ma'am yeah yes yes yeah yes yes some if i have the 300 rupees okay uh, in front of me there are three people if i give 100 100 to the every uh, each each every one so it is equal ma'am so if i find okay someone need more than uh, another person okay and i share one person one uh, 150 rupees and another person 80 something like that so it is a uh, you know, equity uh, very good pradeep that was a very good example actually i used to give some other example also like uh, by, by people watching a football match in a court okay and uh, you know we have that net uh, that is a barrier and uh, the benches are arranged in the same level so children will be there uh, women will be there as the father will be there so what will happen um, the government has provided or that uh, particular uh, management has provided equal opportunity you know everyone can watch the thing uh, sitting in the same place okay so uh, but that is known as equality so government provide various programs like we have provided a program to make people equal or we have equally distributed all those things but equity means for children particular height level chair for women particular chair or like a, a, a male person based on the height so this is known as equity based on the need of a person as you said giving based on the money based on the needs it can be 100 it can be 20 it can be 10 like that yeah that is known as equity so that is what we all need now we need equity try to understand the problem of persons based on that plan out programs then another point is also there ultimate to that now just imagine we are watching this football match and we are just removing that barricade this is known as social justice we are removing that problem itself understood now uh, as you said in your example you have this much money and you are giving this money like this so what are the reasons for making this people differ in their need for money that problem itself has to be solved that is known as social justice okay so we social workers have to work towards i think not equality not equity but ultimate aim should be what social justice social justice okay so i think you are clear so distributing resources equitably that is very very important then challenging unjust unjust policies and practices unjust policies and practices should be challenged then working in solidarity what do you mean by that wherever you go you should be part of the team and your ultimate aim should not be your what is a 
uh, vision you are it should be that organization's vision it should be social work oriented vision so work in solidarity so uh, these are the different points when we think about social justice can anybody uh, repeat the points for me social justice yeah under social justice which are the values we have to uphold recognizing the diversity yeah which was the first one challenging negative challenging discrimination, discrimination. challenging negative discrimination yeah. then Next. recognizing diversity, diversity. distributing yes, resources equitably equitably yes then challenging unjust policy and practice yes then working in solidarity working in solidarity okay so i think you are clear about uh, these kind of values this coming under social justice yeah uh, these are all coming under human values mm. and social uh, you know uh, ethics but uh, this was this is classified as basic principles uh, the first four points that we discussed were basic principles and uh, the next one comes under social justice values coming under social justice okay Yes. If a social worker follows all these things, then it will be very easy to work in a community. That's what I understand. So after lot, uh, after lot of discussions, this kind of uh, principles and uh, this has come. Okay. Yes. Now, um, I will just uh, tell you some points that you have to read because. Uh, maybe we, you will not be getting some other classes but uh, when you uh, prepare for exams and all please uh, go through uh, some points that i am men uh, mentioning now okay you should uh, read about charity voluntary organization and shramadha and uh, i don't think there is a need to explain these points but please go through the uh, you know charity uh, work then later it developed into voluntary action and uh, one very good example is ramadan ramadan we all know we all took part in various ramadans isn't it ramadan ah ramadan when we say about ramadan it is actually manual labor ramadan especially in india we all uh, go for ramadan on october 2nd isn't it yeah <laughs> yeah uh, on october 2nd okay so manual labor Uh, volunteerism uh, so here comes and um, we will ask them, especially nss students will be taking part in that and now social work colleges are taking part in that and uh, sometimes we will ask for people like uh, is there anybody who is interested isn't it uh, then sometimes some people will be coming but now we have to make it compulsory because only few students will be coming uh, as a volunteer so in ramadan volunteerism is very important volunteerism so manual labor will be there volunteerism is there then another important uh, point is collective and cooperative endeavor if you go for a ramadan actually one person cannot do anything within a short span of time so here comes uh, the role of collective spirit cooperative spirit when we all come together we want to clean a road we want to dispose waste from a particular place when we all work together it will happen within 2 3 hours isn't it isn't it you all have experience in that isn't it mm. <laughs> okay then uh, in ramadan one more point is very important that is promotion or protection of public good or interest it is not for our sake it is actually for the uh, promotion and protection of public interest or uh, public good or interest so in ramadan you have to write these four points manual labor is important volunteerism is important collective and cooperative endeavor is important and promotion of public good or interest that is very important okay clear is clear Yes. Ma'am, can you tell one more time the last point? Promotion of promotion or protection of public good or interest. Okay. Okay. Yes. Then you should uh, study about 
social movement and social reform why we have to study that is because all these have contributed towards social work profession especially mm -hmm. like, social yes, movement on social reform reform and uh, we know that uh, social movement uh, we have learned about so many social movements that happened in india uh, arya samaj brahma samaj and uh, as a result of various social movement uh, abolition of sadhi has happened uh, girls education remarriage women re widow remarriage act has happened so you understood social movement and as a result of that social reform as a social reform so you should read uh, about some social movements and uh, a result of social movement is social reform okay and uh, uh like uh, i would like to give you few points regarding social movement like when when will we start uh, social movement because we have a discontent discontent means we think against a particular uh, situation discontent that is what do we mean by discontent so when we have a discontent we think about social movement then when we get awareness about a particular problem even now in some of the some of states they are not aware that about their basic rights even now they are you know uh, following so many mal practices because they are not aware about the problem so when we get some awareness we start fight against that particular problem so collective awareness then like minded people because some people come together they say that now this is the situation here in this particular place we have to fight against this then comes a social movement so like minded people then always uh, more social movements uh, fight against autonomy uh, then they fight for equity human dignity human rights etc okay then social movements uh, some methods they used to follow are protest then demonstrations strike karao band now band is uh, this thing prohibited but uh, hartal is there so uh, strike karao band in all these ways they show their protest they show that they are against this thing. okay then so these are uh, very important uh, why we go for social movement i think you are you got little bit point with regard to that uh, there will be a discontent then when we get collective awareness then like minded people come minded. together yes right then right. yeah yeah we we always we fight for equity human equity, dignity. dignity yes human right then comes social movement then uh, we know methods we used to follow our demonstration strike kharao band etc then uh, what is the result of a social movement definitely a change isn't it a reform reform will happen a social evil will be prohibited so that is the first major characteristic of a social reform any uh, social evil that is existing in the society will be uh, demolished because of social movement and social reform then here also we can see collective focused focused groups will work together focused group because if for example just imagine sadhi uh, raja ram mohan roy fought against uh, and we all know that sadhi was prohibited uh, and even uh, brahma samaj arya samaj they gave very good teachings to people so all these have led to abolition of sadhi okay so uh, a common evil was demolished during that time then um, prevailing situation Uh, we are not satisfied with that so we need a reform so that can be the reason for social reform then 
usually for social reform non violent methods are followed and uh, when you hear about non violent method who comes to your mind gandhi comes to gandhi <laughs> comes to our mind yeah. and uh, when you look back to our history most of the social reforms has happened especially salt satyagraha uh, then a levying of tax uh, for salt then quit india movement all those are very good examples uh, for social movement and even social reform has happened in some areas with regard to this particular activities okay then leaders are very very important initiators or leaders if there is nobody to raise voice who will uh, come with a social reform so very very important point is initiators or leaders are very very important then sometimes uh, we usually say that non violent ways and all but sometimes in social reform also we have to go with some violent means violent means protest okay so uh, that is a very important topic then you have to understand about social service social defense social security and social welfare clearly the nodes are given here social service uh, during the last session i gave you uh, what is the difference between social service and uh, this thing social defense means every country every nation have got their own defense mechanisms social defense like based on the social conditions of a particular country laws are there um, uh, rights has to be maintained so based on the now itself transgender that uh, point is added in every application form uh, initial years uh, when you apply for to any university uh, that column was not there so social defense means whenever problems related to rights you know that has to be tackled that has to be solved by government and so right will be coming so that is what and even you know about um, right to education uh, right to employment right to uh, livelihood all these things are there fundamental rights are there to enhance these kind of rights what we have to do is there is a social defense mechanism okay that uh, there uh, there comes laws rules policies programs so that their rights are maintained that comes under social defense okay and social welfare means good fortune happiness uh, prosperity health all these are very important welfare ultimate aim of any nation or ultimate aim of anything is welfare everyone should be happy everyone should be prosperous everyone should be having health everyone should be having um, good fortune so the programs that uh, we plan uh, the programs that we plan uh, for this kind of uh, welfare is coming under social welfare that is very very important a nation has to plan welfare programs and activities and the social workers have a very good role because when we do some research the findings of the research that can be applied for social welfare programs so we have a very good role in policy planning program all those things so please all students please go through that particular points also okay then uh social work uh, towards the last point i am coming to the last point actually social work uh, should lead towards social action uh, we all study so many things uh, in social work uh, education but uh, we need people who will practice or who will start some projects who will uh, start some agencies who will come up with some ngos who will give job opportunities to some people so this is what we all aim at so social work ultimately should lead towards social action so that is very very important
then and uh, i would like to ask uh, uh, two three points uh, i'm winding up uh, which are the primary methods of social work case primary work. methods social case work group work and ah. uh, social case work case social work and and group community, community organization why we group say this as our primary method of social work social case work social group work yeah directly mm. dealing with uh, individual yeah. in case work in case yeah work yes yes work. very so, good direct yes yes we are having face to face dealing with people in primary method primary method uh, social case work we are dealing with individuals social group work we are working with groups so uh, community organization we are working with communities face to face okay to solve their problems so that is why we say these three methods are primary methods of social and secondary methods which are the secondary methods social action social, social welfare action, administration social welfare administration and and uh, social, social work or, research social, social work, work research, research. so why this is considered to be secondary because these three are very very important but in all these three areas social action it is it can be based on a study conducted by some people elsewhere based on that you go forward with a social action okay so it is not necessary that we are directly dealing with people in social action and the social welfare administration means policies and programs framed by government based on some studies or based on a problem faced by one group of people based on a problem faced by one community so social welfare administration means policies and programs planned by the structure or the government or the administration and social work research definitely as i told you all you all um, do various researches and you will be giving these result to some groups and they will be planning programs so social work research it's not something you directly deal with people a deal with the people with to whom you will be helping that is the point okay okay so that is why this so this is the uh, you know basic of uh, uh, social work so uh, through our uh, uh, course uh, msw001 we have uh, came to we came to know about history of social work in america social work in europe social work in asia pacific and uh, asia pacific 2 and also in africa and middle east and also we came to know some concepts related to social work we came to know about some ethics and values related to social work and also we got some basics like uh, what are the methods of uh, social so uh, with that i am winding up the class okay uh hope you all have you all understood the points that i discussed any comments yes, or any yes ma'am can you give your email id uh, actually um, all this kind of things you will get from your uh, regional office okay that is the instruction provided to us uh, any inquiries anything uh, you have to consult with your regional office from there you will be getting this kind of uh, support okay okay and uh, yeah yes uh, so that is what uh, and uh, you can uh, if you need any that kind of support please uh, call your regional office and we will we will get information from there and we will deal that kind of problems in that way okay so no need to worry about that but this is the protocol that we have to follow കിട്ടിയില്ല ഗൂഗിളിൽ കാണാൻ പറ്റില്ല അതുകൊണ്ട് ഉച്ചയ്ക്കുള്ള ക്ലാസ് അറിയില്ല നടത്തുന്നത്
yes uchchakalla i think it will be by somebody else okay uh okay. but uh, i i got uh, this information that i will be having uh, three sessions yesterday i uh, had two sessions and today morning i had the third session so uh, that is what uh, i have to do okay yes hello ma'am okay, okay thank you ma'am yes okay usha hello ma'am okay thank you ma'am yes. okay thank you thank you so much